Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining uh, the khutbah today. So, as mentioned, uh, the khutbah is going to be about uh, Imam Ali, alayhi salam. So, we're just going to dive right into it. So, the 13th of Rajab, or the 17th of March, 599 AD, is when our beloved Imam was born. And what a great birth was his birth, brothers and sisters. SubhanAllah, he was born in the Kaaba. The most holiest of places on this earth. He was a man whom Allah manifested within after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi. And when we say this, we don't we don't mean that he has the virtues of Allah. No, no. Rather, we mean that the virtues of Islam, the virtues of goodness and love were within him. Love for the Deen and love for Allah was all within Imam Ali alaihi salam. He was a man who, when he was born, the angel Gabriel announced that a boy was born in the house of God and the sky and the earth was filled with a light, an extremely bright light. He was a man adopted by the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. There was never a day where Ali was not with our beloved messenger. There was this one narration that says, uh, where even in the mountains of Hira, where our, blo- uh, our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, goes to meditate, that Ali had gone with him and they'd stayed up there for three or four days at a time. And Nahj al-Balagha Ali salam, says that I used to go with the Holy Prophet like the baby goes with his mother. Do you see how attached Ali salam, was to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The love that binds them together was a love that cannot be matched by today's people. They were intertwined before their birth. It is narrated that they were both from the same nur, subhanallah. And as a youth, Ali, Ali salam, he was well built, like very well built, muscles, tall, wide chest. So he was very strong, mashallah. And the youth of his, age, of, his, of his age and even those who were older than him were scared of him. Whenever they tried to mock the Holy Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, they used to run away when they saw Ali. He was always there uh, to stand by the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and act as his protection. Not only did Ali always stand as protection for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi, but he also was involved in many uh, military expeditions when he got older. For example, the Battle of Uhud. The, so, so the story goes like this. <clears throat> uh, so three to four thousand men had come to fight Islam, and when our beloved Prophet heard of this, he came out with he came out of Medina with seven hundred men, and the way the defense was set up was so. The swords would be facing forward and there was mountains behind them. And the archers would be protecting their backs because they can, the enemy could go around and attack them from behind. So the archers were defending their backs. And during the battle, the archers decided to leave their positions. And upon them doing so, Khalid bin Walid saw the opening and attacked them from behind, even attacking the prophets himself. And it was Ali alayhi salam and a few of the other true companions of the prophet that saved the Muslims, engaging in a bloody battle. Swords were swinging up and down, coming across. Blood painted the ground, arrows flying past them, and even injuring Ali. But he kept on fighting, uh, fighting, wanting to protect the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And unfortunately, our Messenger was injured by a stone which had been thrown by the enemy. And upon seeing this, uh, so uh, upon seeing Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, fall to the ground, Khalid la'anhullah shouted, Muhammad is killed. And upon hearing this, the companions and Muslim soldiers had began running in panic. And the messenger of Allah was left on the bloody battlefield, injured, with only Ali, Hamza, Abu Dajana and Zakwan to defend him. And these uh, brave warriors fought heroically and fiercely. And during this uh, battle, which ensued, because the Prophet had fallen, Hamza was killed by a spear which was thrown by the slave of Abu Sufyan's wife, Hind, la'anu Allah. So, uh, during the battles, Akwan and Abu uh, 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 Dajna uh, got wounded. And what they did was they tried to cover the body of the mess- uh, uh, the, the body of our uh, beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And subhanAllah, look at the love they had for him. Now, it's just a sad note. They were injured and still crude to him, wanting to protect his body. 
And so upon them being injured, Ali was the only one left to defend the Holy Prophet وآله, engaging in combat against numerous enemies only for them to um, retreat back. Now, <clears throat> during the engagements that Ali had while he was protecting the Prophet وآله, he was uh, injured uh, 16 to 20 times, I believe. And seeing this, Khalid bin Walid shouted, finish the messenger of Allah. And so two men stepped forward to try and kill our holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and Ali killed them and they and they had three children together and no no they didn't have three children uh, they had many children but we're going to focus on three of those children Al Hassan Al Hussein but yeah sorry my think is glitching so yeah we're going to be focusing on mainly Al Hassan Al Hussein Al Abbas now, two of those uh, men, which I've just listed, were deemed to be the chiefs of the youth of Jannah and the moons of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They were deemed to be the moons of Bani Hashim. They were Hassan and Hussein. They had virtues just like their father, Ali, the bravery, the honor. And even Abbas also had virtues of Ali. And th the virtue which mostly sticks out uh, for Abbas was loyalty was the loyalty he had for his brother Hussein on the day of Karbala when he refused to drink water before his brother and when the army cut off his hands and carried the uh, when the army cut off his hands he carried the, the water with his mouth to try and get it to his family to see his loved ones his loved ones quench their thirsts Abbas was the hands of Ali as said by him on the day of Karbala when, the, when he addressed the enemy saying that it is the job of the hands to protect the eyes of the messenger of Allah and the eyes being Hassan and Hussein. And that is why they cut off his hands. The sons of Ali all wanted to die like him. Al-Hassan was poisoned in Medina. Uh, Ali was poisoned as well. He wanted to die just like him. Ali was struck by a sword and Hussein died by the sword on the day of Karbala. And Abbas was injured and killed in the name of honor, just like his father Ali. They all wanted to die like him Imam Ali السلام, had passed away in Kufa <clears throat> And the events that led uh, to him being assassinated uh, Goes as follows Muawiyah Who is the governor of Syria um, at, at that time his, uh, He had violence against the dominions of Ali the, the, the violence he was doing had escalated And some of Muawiyah's men Had reached the inroads of Kufa Which was a little of Roughly 170 miles From Kufa Away from Kufa And the men of Kufa Who had claimed that they would stand And fight with Ali Were unwilling to fight against the Syrians so just imagine, so imagine, let's say, for example, the server owner Mehdi is uh, standing here and everyone is coming to him saying, yes, we're going to fight with you. We're going to do this with you. We're going to make sure everything goes good. And then when the time comes, we all say to him, yeah, no, we're not hoping you're not involved. We're too scared. Do you see how, how, how disgusting the actions of these men were that lived in Kufa at the time of Ali, alayhi salam? So because of them uh, being unwilling to fight against the Syrians, Ali found it impossible to take effective action against Muawiyah. I mean, Muawiyah himself led many raids across the lands of Jazeera and Raqqa all the way to Mosul and was met with absolutely no resistance. No one stood in the path of Muawiyah. Do you, do you see how scared people were of him? because of his army and because of the political um, backing he had in Syria. And obviously, after a couple, of, I believe it was a couple of weeks, um, Ali السلام, declared inside the mosque of Kufa that he and a few of his faithful followers, so he had a few people that were willing to fight with him, he, he declared that he and those men will leave the city in an attempt to halt the Syrian aggression against Iraq at the time. Even if it meant he and his true, loyal, loving followers uh, followers would perish.
And upon realizing that the, uh, that the people of Kufa may be left without a leader if Ali had died, it, it stung them to mobilize. It convinced them, you know, we have to defend the city. <clears throat> so yeah, so they, did, they defended the city, but they didn't um, go out with the Ali, uh, to my understanding. I think some of them went with the Ali and some stayed in the city to uh, look after the city. So the Battle of Safin had been the first trial of strength between Ali and Muawiyah, military-wise. The battle had become a near victory for Ali. Ali was so close to winning, uh, to beating Muawiyah. So, so very close. And it was deemed, some people even say it was deemed a victory for Ali. But where the issue lied was politically. Politically, he had become a stalemate. And some would say he had lost his political support because of the battle with Muawiyah. So because of, so you know Muawiyah in Syria, Syria had a lot of um, political effect on the lands, on the Arabian lands around it. Um, because Muawiyah was from there, politically he had more support. So Ali lost all of his support, his political support, which in a sense means he kind of lost. So after some time, it was clear that there would be another battle, another trial of strength between Muawiyah and Ali. Before uh, the battle, Ali, Ali salam, was in the mosque. So just before the battle had uh, started, I think it was a couple of days before they set out for the exhibition. So it was Fajr. Ali, Ali salam, was in the mosque. He had done the adhan and he was praying to Allah. So as mentioned, uh, he was praying Fajr. He had entered prostration to Allah. And when he had raised his head, Ibn Mujim had approached Ali salam and he hit him in the head with a sword. What Ali said upon receiving the blow of the sword, many of us in that moment would not be thinking about. We wouldn't even have the time to fathom such a thing to say. He had said, I attained success and salvation by the Lord of the house. His blood drenching the floors of the mosque. Drenching his clothes and the prayer mat which he was praying on. The blood running down his face, limiting his sight. And a loud scream between the heavens and the earth was heard. O oh people, today the foundations of faith have been dismantled. Today the handle of religion is broken. Today the cousin of the Prophet, the commander of the faithful, Ali al-Murtada is murdered. Ali had said before his death, there will come a time where nothing will be hidden except the truth. And nothing will be revealed except falsehood. And verily after his death, falsehood had rid the lands of Kufa. Kufa was filled with clubs where women would dance, men would drink, and truth was rarely, if not never heard. The day, the day after... Uh, the day after the uh, the blow to Ali from the sword, Ali was in his deathbed, and the poison had begun had had began to enter his bloodstream properly and began to affect him. His body, which was once strong, became weak and fragile. And amidst all of this, amidst all of the pain, amidst everything he was going through, he still insisted. That Ibn Muljam, the man who struck him, be fed the same food that he ate and be given the same water that he drank and to be treated fairly and given a fair trial once he had died. Do you guys see why we say Allah is to manifest inside Ali after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? Do you guys understand why we say now? Why we say this now? Who here can openly say without a doubt, yes, 
he who stabs me, I will make sure he eats. I will make sure he sleeps comfy. I will make sure he drinks water. I will make sure he is fine. I will make sure he's everything. Before me, Ali alayhi salam made sure the man ate before him. Do you guys understand why? Again, why we say that Allah is to manifest within Ali alayhi salam? Ali was so caring to the man that had struck him that the man began regretting what he had done. There's many narrations that I've heard where it says the man had started to regret his action of hitting Ali with a poison sword. This day, today, Ali alayhi salam had passed away leaving this dunya but Ali had left us with 12 imams uh, not 12 sorry uh, 11 imams after him Do, who knows the names of these imams who here can tell me the names of these imams anyone if you just type in general okay Hamoud, I'll unmute you and you can tell us the names of the imams. Oh, it's not letting me unmute you. It's fine. Just type out the names or should I just say them to make it easier? Hamoud, you're going to have to unmute yourself, Abby. Yeah, unmute yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Works on yeah. Okay, so, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Hussein, I mean, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Imam, uh, Imam, Imam, oh, Imam. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Wait, let me start again. Okay, so yes, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, Imam Muhammad al Baqi alayhi salam, Imam Jafar al Sadiq alayhi salam, Imam Musa al Qadim alayhi salam, Imam Ali al Rida alayhi salam, Imam Muhammad al Jawad alayhi salam, Imam Ali al Hadi alayhi salam, Imam Hassan al Askari alayhi salam, and a twelfth Imam, Imam Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam. Oh, Masalli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ahsan. So you guys, do you guys understand the significance of Ali alayhi salam? Do you guys understand how important he was to Islam? Okay. So... So yeah, he left us with the Imams after him. From Al Hassan all the way to Al Mahdi Ajlaw Faraja. And during Ali's lifetime, there was multiple poems written by him. There was a poem for each uh, thing that had happened in his life or thing that he had seen. Um I could tell you some of the poems if you guys would like. Yes, okay. So, this one poem written by Ali, alayhi salam, it goes, Leave and seek and you shall find something better than what you have left behind. Leave and work hard for the sweetness of life 
is hard work. Leave and remember that a lion must leave its land to find prey. And the arrow must leave the bow to find its mark. Such beautiful words that has a deeper meaning than many that many won't understand from reading it straight away. An interpretation of like, the poem, so like the meaning behind the poem, is that you must leave the mindset you are within to find your deen. You must leave the mindset of I am better than so and so, and I know enough already, so why should I learn more? Or you know what? I've done this very bad thing, Allah won't forgive me. Or I failed Allah, or I failed the Ahl al-Bayt. I'm, I'm a kafir, I'm finished. You are bound to what you reap of yourself. If you harvest negativity in your life, if you harvest childish, uh, childish mindset, if you harvest the ideology of Allah will never forgive you, uh, that you failed the Ahl al-Bayt, you're going to go to hell, then let me tell you something. You will be. You will leave no space of learning the Deen and the religion, and learning the Ahlul Bayt, and you will not find them. Nor will you come close to learning of them. Hence, why some of our brothers and sisters, and any other sect, will never truly understand what the Ahlul Bayt are, alaihum salam, because of the mindset they have harvested. There was another poem. From Imam Ali alayhi salam. And it goes. One moment. Let me just bring it up inshallah. Yes. It goes. Your sickness is from you. But you do not perceive it. And your remedy is within you. But you do not sense it. You presume you are a small entity, but within you is unfolded the entire universe. You are indeed the evident book by whose alphabets the hidden becomes manifest. Therefore, you have no need to look beyond yourself. What you seek is within you if only you reflect. You guys understand what he's trying to say in this poem? It's very easy to understand. But you guys get the idea. Now, as one of the brothers meant, Imam Ali was the first male to accept Islam. Now, many people, because they don't like him being the first, they say he was the first child, he was the first uh, so-and-so, but he was the first male to accept Islam, regardless of what anyone says. He was the first man to, uh, to accept Islam. And when... The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi was leaving the city. Ali alayhi salam slept in the bed of the Prophet when the enemy had come to kill him. So again, do you guys are you guys able to understand how much love he had for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi? Can I speak? Um, MZ? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I just don't want to go off topic, so, so like, what are you talking about exactly? Cause exactly just, like like a, a, just about Imam Ali, alayhi salam, in general. Does it have like, to be anything about how he was? And anything about him. Anything. Okay. So I want to tell uh, people the story. Who wants to add things about Imam Ali, alayhi salam, go ahead. Uh, do you mind if I tell people a story? About Imam Ali, no, Ali go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So there was just there's a couple of times right when Imam Ali mm -hmm. alayhi wasalam, used to fast. There was uh, poor people that would come to his house, and when they came to his house, they would ask him for food, and Imam Ali alayhi salam, would give up his iftar just to feed the poor people. He would go days without breaking. He would only drink water to break his fast. He would go days without eating while break like well. Uh, so instead, like let's say he's fasting. He would fast, and a poor man would come to his uh, his door knocking, and he would be asking for food. Imam Ali would give all the food he had ready for his iftar on that day to the poor man, and he would go sleep just just from water, and then he would fast the next day. So if you look at how humble this man was, he put others before himself. 
He was humble. He was God fearing. He lived for Allah and he died for Allah. He fought for Allah. His whole life was just for Allah. 